Three Grots in a Vox is intended for a mature audience. This means there may, will, be crude language and discussions of adult themes. Especially if we're talking about Tactical Marines or Gabriel Seth. Viewer discretion is not only advised but encouraged. All opinions are our own and often given for humorous purposes. Any advice is given largely for entertainment purposes and would probably be ignored. But if you do learn something useful, count it as a win. Hello and welcome to Three Gots in a Box, where today you're going to get to listen to about two hours of complete nonsense. And Mark. And Forrest, I guess. <laughs> that is still my favourite comment I've ever seen, apart from the one that compared it to Top Gear, but shitter. Um, <laughs> two hours of fantastic nonsense is possibly the best. Best, uh, I mean, if, if we had like a mission statement, that would be right up there, really. Sure, I think we put that on our um, on our <laughs> new uh, disclaimer. You know, be prepared for two hours of fantastic nonsense. Yeah, and also don't pay any attention to anything but, we say because it's but not bollocks wrong. because we're not allowed to say bollocks. Uh, oh, bollocks is a fairly easy word. I don't know. Do Americans dislike the word bollocks? Uh, I have not no as idea, much but... as they dislike the word damn, which apparently is why we keep getting demonetized because oh, right, John can't okay. get through a sentence without saying damn. <laughs> Damn it, Tony. Uh, the, <laughs> the thing that I really like is the guy from like two weeks ago that said, this is a great podcast if you guys would stop speaking over each other. So we decided to start this week by yeah. farting over each other. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we are talking about an intro to Blood Angels. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's not just really an intro to Blood Angels, really. It's an intro to Blood Angels and us and Blood Angels in general, isn't it? More? Uh, yeah, it's in general. We just like thinking of things to talk about. And we figure we talk in detail about Blood Angels an awful lot, as well as the game in general. And then, I don't know, maybe some people don't know what the hell we're actually here for and why, why we give a crap about all of the stuff that we talk about. So uh, I figured we'll like explain why we care. Why we care? Good question. Yeah. So, we, yeah, I think we probably care a little bit. I mean, we've we've made a channel based on this, and and you've made a, well, technically, much like a ten a times bigger channel than, uh, than than ours based on this. So, uh, you probably care a little bit. Let's be fair. Yeah. John made a channel based on this. We appeared on a channel based on this, and then and we made a channel. Where we did into it. Yeah, this. absolutely. Yeah. I was going to say, does do you need WD forty for your chair, Mark? Uh, probably. Why is it, is it continually squeaking? I can hear a squeak, yeah. Right, Unless there's a mouse in this. No, 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 it's definitely my chair. I okay. do need a new chair. You're not wrong. Okay, okay. Um, I keep I keep trying to see if I can get a new um, office chair for, this is my home office setup as well, but uh, they're, they're not. You're, you're one of these, Mark. I'm trying to what model of this chair is, but it's the best chair in the world. Then I want to get a Secret Labs chair. World. I've heard nothing but good about Secret Labs chairs, but I don't want to drop like 400 quid on something if I don't have to. Yes, um, but what we need is everyone that's watching this podcast to think about subscribing to the channel or supporting the channel, and then so Mark can get a new chair. chair yeah, play. then we can have less weird squeaky noises whenever I start jiggling backwards and forwards because I either get enthusiastic or I need a piss, one of the two. Who knows? <laughs> to be fair, I want a Secret <laughs> Labs chair as well, but they are very expensive. Yeah. This is a Herman Miller Cosm. Okay. Uh -huh. Just show um, up there, why don't you? All right, fair enough. This genuinely the best chair I've ever sat in. Okay. And how much did it cost? About a thousand pounds. Yes, that's about right. <laughs> I mean, good chairs are really, really oh, worth really it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this They're is awesome. the way I was looking at it. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in this chair. Not so much <laughs> yeah. you know, coming out of lockdown. But when I was sitting at home teaching from home and running seminars and things oh, yeah. like that, I'd often sit in this chair for eight or nine hours of the day. Yeah, yes. good office chairs sold out really quick, and, and the they prices did. went up so quite a lot over. When my last one broke, I thought, well, bugger it, I'm going to buy the best one, the most comfortable one, the longest lasting with its 10 year warranty one. Yep. Spend a little bit more because if you're sitting in it for a third of your life, yeah. you yeah. might as well get something that's. That's pretty comfortable, doesn't do you back in. I was going to say, you're making us very jealous about your chair. Anyway, Blood Angels, who yeah. they are, what they are. Uh, there are Space Marines. They are yeah. Red Space Marines, is when you get right down to it, I suppose. This kind of I thought it was the green guys. Yes, that's absolutely right. No, they've got red bits on them, see? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
That's to do with yellow. I just want to draw your attention, Mark, to the hazard stripes. What hazard stripes? I don't see any. There's a hazard stripes. stripe on his bolter. There's a hazard stripes on his knee pad. It's not hazard stripes. It's a decorative hazard stripes. single. It's a black, black and white stripe. stripe. It's, it's a, a, sorry, single, it's a yellow a single, black stripe. A single black stripe, stripe. on a yellow black it's, on a yellow background. It's, it's not, not just Iron Warrior. It's not hazard, hazard stripes. stripes, really, is it? I mean, come on. Thou man. art wrong in your it, assumption that only Iron Warriors wear hazard stripes. I never said only has Iron Warriors where has the stripes. I might I mean, have said the Iron Warriors are famous for it and having them bloody everywhere. I really like the guy on the far left of the pole who's got the RPG or I guess the rocket launcher. Yeah. But the rocket launcher is yellow with black flames. How about that? How about them it. apples? It's just this kind of like second edition colour scheme. We're getting into what's going to come up later. But is this sort of like super bright, super over the top? ridiculous colour schemes is what attracted yeah. me to these guys in the first place. I'd, I'd love the whole space background of this picture with the like, the, the blue skyscraping buildings. Yeah, and it's the, the super 80s, isn't it? It really is. Absolutely love this piece of art. Yeah, uh, it's one of the reasons why I'm looking forward to getting into the new Definitely Not Epic Honest game. With yeah. marines and tanks and titans. Which and would have gone on pre-order for about a week when this episode comes out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So that'll be good. So Blood Angels are one of the 20 legions, original legions of Space Marines, uh, and they are characterized by being uh, noble of spirit, but impure of body, because they fall into vampirism and rage and craziness and a little bit of mutation and sort of things. I thought it was the other way around. Uh, pure of the, body. The whole idea is that dark spirit, angels are dark angels are pure of body, but foul of spirit. Right. Uh, and blood angels are pure of spirit, but impure of body. Because they suck people's blood. Yeah, exactly. They they got that whole mutation thing going on, and they fall to the black rage, which controls them and all. I love their too. original name as well, or their original sort of like nicknamey thing for their legion before they met Sanguinius as well. What was that? Remind the me. Eaters of the Dead. Oh, I vaguely remember that. I don't know where I read it, but I vaguely remember it. Is that in this book? No. It's in the... Yeah. It's more Horus Heresy, sort of, because it's pre-Sanguinius times. Yeah, so it was mentioned were... in the Sanguinius the Great Angel book, which yeah. um, is something so we'll come to a little bit later. Before they were... <clears throat> before they met with Sanguinius, they were known as the Eaters of the Dead, and they did have a flaw... But at the same time, they were famous because their gene seed could turn the most corrupt, the most malnourished, mutated dreg of a human and turn them into this perfect angel. Mm. Um, but they used to eat their own dead. And the reason they did that was, say you had, I mean, I'm going to use an example, not from that time, but from a modern example to make more sense, but Captain Carleon, so captain of the second company? First. First company, First company. Yeah. yep. So the idea was that the captain, they always wearing the helmets, things like that, and they all looked very similar to each other. They would die in battle, and his underling would eat him and then take on everything about him, take on his name, take on his appearance, take on his persona. And then as they aged and died, the knowledge would continue on, but yeah. so would the person. So it looked like the same Marine was leading for years and years and years. Because there's a thing oh. about space reads where they've got an organ that allows them to eat absorb the memories of people and absorb some of the memories from from the people. Um, they, yeah. So they became a little bit of an embarrassment to the rest of the Imperium, and they started getting sent on dirtier and dirtier missions. Hmm. Um, and then they got sent off. Now we're stretching my memory, and someone's going to correct me, and I'm probably it was another one. I, I want to say it was Titan. But it was no it was Pluto, I think. Well, we've and got a we'll law and history section in a couple of slides' time, right. so we we can we can save it for then if you want, or we could we could skip ahead a bit. I don't mind. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to carry on telling the story, or shall I do some research? Well, who are the Blood Angels now? And you can do some research. So okay. you the tell Blood me Angels the now time. to me. Uh, my mates always call them Twilight Sparkly Space Angel Vampires. Um, as opposed to obviously the twilight werewolves that space wolves are um, noble of spirit, they're all into self-sacrificing they're generally considered to be heroes of the Imperium um, and the Primarch who founded them or whose genetics caused them to be created descending from him uh, is famous for having sacrificed himself in order to uh, try and help defend the Imperium and save the Emperor himself 
Um, so sacrifice is definitely a theme amongst them, and nobility is definitely a theme amongst them. Um, they're supposedly all very artistic as well, um, and I think those are the largely defining traits, apart from the fact they like red, black, and gold. Uh, and they obviously have a corrupted gene seed. Yes. Um, partially due to uh, their being descended from their, the Primarch and partially due to some psychic imprint thing from when their Primarch died. Yeah. It says uh, in, let me quote the second edition book, then I want to tell you something interesting about the second edition book, right? All right. Stanguinius well, was no match for Horus at the height of his demon-infused power. Uh, he was slain by the War Master with contemptuous ease. The psychic echo of his terrible death can sometimes be heard by those of his gene seed, causing a madness and a fury to come upon them with the tainting of their souls with a vision of darkness. Um, Love it. But what's really interesting is I never actually realised this in this Codex Second Edition until just right now, there's a Death Company guy with a rocket launcher in the front. Yep. How cool is that? That's, it's that's very pretty cool. cool. Right, right. We're, Death Company we're beer break first. Beer oh, break, alright. Go on in. This is called Glide. Glide. I need to read the gumph. Is that it's lubricating because you always need more gliding or something? Uh, mm -hmm. A collaboration drop project dr uh, brewing company known for pushing creative boundaries and creating beers that inspire their passions for the industry and their lifestyle. Okay, we don't care about that. Glide is a 7% Nipah, I think any IPA, whatever that means, uh, bursting with tropical sweetness on the nose. The combination of mosaic, Simcoe, and strata hops, pure dank resin. With beautifully exotic passion fruit and strawberry tones, a silky smooth mouthfeel helps with drinkability, providing a moorish, refreshing experience. But this is the line that got me. Think dank umbongo with fruit tones of kiwi, strawberry, passion fruit, and a little pine. So it's what is dank a flavour descriptor? Well, also, umbongo, if I'm remembering right, isn't wasn't that the little cartons of... Yeah, yeah. 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 So what I've now got in my head... Apparently they drink it in the Congo. Drink, with like vodka mixed in and a piece of wood for the pine. All right. Okay. So like gnawing on softwood. All silence as Tony tastes the dank, not umbongo beer. It's such a weird. Do you know what it smells like? Actually, does it smell dank? It smells umbongo. <laughs> These are important things. I've also found out where the planet was I got sent. So I'm going to finish that story in a minute. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, we got we got a couple. I of... knew it was there. I was digging around Tabs in my before we get massive there. piles of lore stuff. John, anything else you want to say about who and what the Blood Angels are in modern 40k times? Well, Tony. In modern times, in, I was going to say in modern times they seem much more dark red than they did in the times that I started. Like, if you look on Games Workshop the website, all the Blood Angels are really nasty, uh, gnarly, sort of rough and ready, Mephist and red, really I dull painting. If that's Tony's liking it face or not. It's one of those... So, do you remember the TV show Black Books? Yes. No. Uh, well, in Black Books, Dylan Moran uh, in his character said that there's only two kinds of wine. There's, oh, that's disgusting, or, yeah, that's quite nice. Because yeah. very occasionally, I'll give you there's a third kind of wine. It's where you first drink it, you go, oh, that's just, oh, oh, I know, actually, that's quite nice. I'll have another one. And that's kind of how this works. It's like, oh, that's in your face. But actually, that's quite nice. I, I might have some more. Okay. All and that, right. it falls into that third category. It slaps you in the face. So that's with, how we um, define dank. Aggressiveness. Then. All right. But, you know, then you suddenly want some more. Um, I don't know if it's like some sort of slightly sadomasochist hurt me again thank you please that's entirely possible sorry but, john you were saying darker red stuff yeah i feel like nowadays they're they're portrayed as a much more grim but maybe that's their whole r rhetoric now with 40k it's like a more grim fantasy um whereas i am with you guys like the thing that like look at this first book that i got look at all the bright colors look at all the the bright reds, the yellows, we don't really see that. Well, I mean, this is like anymore. original Blood Angels artwork here from one of the core box sets. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the first picture he had up, this is modern uh, Blood Angels artwork from the current codex or most recent codex that they had. The, they're really leaning. It's not 
grimdark. Because grimdark was sort of Blanchitsu style of third yeah. edition. This is just grim, realistic, sort of ultra realistic painting sort of style and things, isn't it? Yeah. It's very dirty. It's very realistic. You look at the way they hold their guns. They're all sort of like modern military manual of arms kind of see that's serious the, phrase, Whereas the old ones Black are wildly Black impractical which is when the inspector comes around dylan moran's house and goes dirty dirty, dirty. But, <laughs> i was gonna say but it's a game and what's more inviting i don't know um, yeah it, it, they're, they're just trying to lean into that i, I want to say that the modern ones kind of call of warhammer um, rather than I think own. a lot of workshop over the last few years has gotten to the point where it takes itself extremely seriously compared yeah. to what it used to, which is a thing, um, whether you like it or not, really. Whereas nobody's going to take these guys particularly seriously with the little giggly guys in the corners and I mean, even 50... the third edition codex. Have you got the art from the third edition codex in this? Uh, I don't know. Um, I can't remember which art pieces I picked up except for the last one, which is you'll, you'll know it when we see it. Uh, I almost certainly will. So the third edition art, if I remember what it looks like. Okay. Um, I think we've about mined this topic into the ground anyway. So let's move on to the next slide. And while you, you look up this. I've got my art. I've got my art. I'm going to put my art. That's cool. I've got my I'm going to put my art. Right. How do I do this? Let's see if I can make this work. Uh, You're going to try and override the presenting. I am going to. I'm not going to try. Oh. Ooh. I am. I'm overriding you. Hopefully. <laughs> Did that work? Oh, I remember this art. No, yeah, I, I yeah. Can see it, I can see it as well. So this is the third edition Codex art, and if you look at this little gentleman down here, you know, yeah, this is kind of classic mad vampire-y. Yeah, all right, that's fine. Walken. This is when they started to go grim dark with it a little bit. Yeah, but. I'll get, I'll get rid of that. That's kind of what it sort of reminds me of, as they sort of changed over time. They lent hard into the minor homages to film stars and things like that. Okay. Is this still showing in the right layout that it needs to, John? Or it it is. I, I clicked the button on my end. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right. Um, so, yeah, Tony, how did you get started with Blood Angels? Yeah. Um, it's actually showing the right thing, because for me, now it looks like three giant people and a single window. Yeah, we can. Yeah, that's, we, it, that's why I asked the question. You, you, it's it's good. Trust me. We've broken it. We've no, definitely you've broken. It. You've definitely not broken. You definitely broke it. Things. You personally I broke, broke it. it. <laughs> you, you, you <laughs> dank out. weirdo. You, yeah, absolutely. Uh, sidebar. How does that work? Well, now it just shows me a giant picture of Mark. Woo! Yeah. Just so the backup right. recording has suddenly got a giant picture of Mark in it now, and Excellent. I'm pleased that's, that I broke it. That's what everybody it. wants. Yeah. Uh, auto. Can I go back to like Maybe it was? not. I don't want tiles. I don't want spotlight. Whatever. Oh, it's... look, you could have just asked. Here it is. I could have just asked, yeah. Okay. Right. We'll see, okay. We'll see you so if, you're, if, you're, if you're all now watching the very tiny PowerPoint because I broke it, I'll take that. <laughs> but it was worth it. Do you have to the like... year is 1998. That is in incredibly good condition, that copy. Yeah, I'm really... I am really... I'm at, you should see I have a pristine second edition one as well. I'm... See yeah, if I very... lend a book to someone and they break the spine, I just throw like that book is good as dead mm. to me. If you mm. mouse over the presentation bit, Tony, and click the bit where it says pin, then that'll um that'll enlarge it again. Will it? Everybody needs to know how to enlarge it. Hey, there we go. Because that's gonna affect the backup recording that we probably won't need. Yeah. Unless John has bolstered up the audio again. Which he's never done before, <laughs> honest gov. And certainly hasn't done twice recently. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So Tony, how did you get started with Blood Angels? Um, okay. how did I get started with Blood Angels? I got started very specifically with a single piece of art that I'm going to try and show you without having to switch it because I think I've got it around here somewhere. Okay. Um, and it was it was one of those you know when you see a piece of art. You could we could try and find it later and trust John to put it in in post or something. <laughs> Ironically, not that one, but I have got the white door. That's the same artwork we were just looking at, isn't it? Yeah. This is the third edition release of Blood Angels. This, this copy. See that um, it was actually the one with the Devastator with the plasma cannon. Okay. If you can remember that bit of art. No, not really. Um, I'm sure I've got a copy of it, which I will show you in a moment. But anyway, so that copy was on um it was on a white dwarf, and this would have been third edition. So I did 
I remember that bit of art we showed at the beginning there in second edition, and I did get the Codex Angels of Death in second edition. Why didn't we do anything with it? Um, back then, I was much more into, if I'm honest, my sister battle for second. All right. Okay. Um, but that bit of art on the front of that codex, which ironically didn't have any blood angels in the sorry, codex, <laughs> on the front of that copy white dwarf, which didn't actually have any blood angels in it, yep. really caught my eye. And I just thought it was so cool, the colour scheme, that it sort of put a little niggle in my mind of these are the coolest space marines. I don't have a space marine army. I'd like a space marine army. It should be like this guy. Um, and it just sort of came from there. So... So third edition, I started painting all of my space marines that I had from the main box set and other ones I'd picked up and some from the second edition box set and things like that. And I started painting them up as Blood Angels. And that sort of grew for a while. And by the time I was I was a kid, I didn't have a lot of money. So it never really went anywhere. It's, you know, the odd vehicle here and there and the odd model here and there. And yeah. everybody ends up with loads of space marines. You can't really went through an army because you're a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I went through sort of slowly doing that and tickling bits and adding little bits to it and playing with my sisters of battle, which I got quite a lot of by that point. Um, Tau got released. Yeah. So uh, I thought they looked cool. So I did buy a Tau army um, and I painted it, all of it. I had 100 Fire Warriors in that 1500 point army. Wow. And in the first game, I missed every shot with all 100. Except that's not entirely true. I missed every shot but three. Of which no dark eldar died uh and then i at the end of that game i took the whole army and i traded it with a guy for some more sisters of battle um and that they played one game but i decided that the dice gods have decreed that this is not my army fair enough um and all this time i'm slowly adding the odd model and that to my um to my blood angels um i played a little bit every now and again they used to come out little forces then I think fifth or fifth edition come round, maybe sixth edition, and I went to the dark side and made a Black Templar army, uh -huh. and I played them for a while. But I still painted the odd one red, and then it was really eighth edition that I got really into playing with my Blood Angels again, because at that point I just I'd got married, I'd settled down a little bit. I'd always been painting things, but I'd pretty much stopped playing the game then. Back in sixth and fifth and fourth, to an extent, I was going to tournaments, I was traveling, going abroad a lot, and this sort of thing. But it's sort of taken a back seat as I got married and mm -hmm. this sort of thing. Yep. But eighth was round, eighth was cool, and I thought, do you know what? I need to really start picking these up. And there were those sort of few blood angels that I've been tickling since I was about 10 years old. And they were the ones for me. And that was sort of, I really got properly into them so now they are my biggest most complete army out of all the ones i play i play more battles with those okay but yeah so that's my story as as dull as it was cool john yeah for me it was the second edition box set and i saw a couple of things do you remember this bit oh yes yes i do yeah so this was like your first battles you ever did with a second edition box set. And the first mission literally has you taking five marines, the sergeant with the chainsaw, three guys with a bolt gun, and a flamer against, I think it's 10, no, 30 Gretchen. So five space marines against 30 Gretchen was the first battle. And uh, I actually still have, when was the last time this guy was sold? Nice. Um, nice. So I don't know why I kept this, but what I did notice that they, for this, they actually show you on the back like three different transfer sheets, one for each faction, yeah. and at the bottom they credit who designed it. Quite yeah. cool, right? Um, so yeah, I I got the second edition starter box. I I think I knew nothing about forty k before I got that box. It was thirty nine ninety nine back in the day, if you remember that, wow. if you believe yeah. that, and inside it. Um, they had that pamphlet. Do you remember the pamphlet, the how how to painting guide pamphlet? They yeah, literally yeah. showed you how to paint the orcs, the Gretchens, and the space marines. And in that pamphlet, they showed you how to paint the space marines red. My friend had ultramarines. I thought I wanted something different, so I just copied that pamphlet. And my God, my first space marines are very, very, very badly painted. As if, if if anybody's watching this, you're like I don't know, early twenties, teenager, mid twenties, something. We're all old as fuck so we're like like late 30s early 40s kind of between us so yeah. I, can, I can kind of get why none of this would necessarily be nice. massively familiar to you 
it's it's weird when you think that I, I'm you know we were collecting playing games and stuff before a lot of the people that we talk to and interact with and that were born. Do you know what's mad though is like that's inflation for you. You literally got three different rule books, all the terrain, all the pieces, like sixty models. Was it sixty? No, it might have even been eighty models because it wasn't it forty Gretchen, twenty orcs, and twenty marines, and a dreadnought for the orcs. Yep. For less than the price of one dreadnought. Yeah. That was a box set where you could put your hand in the box and the models had all been built. And it had come out with bits of Gretchen dangling from them because all the pointy sticks and stuff were so sharp. Oh, it was it the pointy happened. helmets. Yeah, all the helmets had Gretchen. spikes on yeah. them. Yeah, I remember and that. I never, I never even tried to paint those Gretchen. Uh, I traded oh. them all away, traded away all those orcs as well. Um, but I kept the Space Marines and kept them ever since. And I did collect four armies. Uh, I collected Eldar, I collected Guard, I collected Blood Angels, and then the last one I collected was Orcs. Um, and at some point I made the call that like this is just too much for my for my hobby because I find it difficult to finish units just for my main army that was the Space Marines. And I have I've had friends that played all three of those armies and they all previously made Space Marines, so we kind of consolidated. And uh, you know some of my friends, like I gave Brett probably like 2,000 points of orcs and he gave me tons of space wing bits so we we sort of all consolidated in our one army and then it just and then I took a 10 year break from the hobby um, it was kind of a for me it was a very weird one actually I, I don't know if I told you guys this um, but my dad got cancer and he was my chauffeur mm. and when he passed away I had no chauffeur to chauffeur around models anymore so I just inadvertently fell out with the hobby it wasn't planned or anything like that it just okay. happened because of circumstances and it was like 10 years later when i went back to my mum's house and was like oh yeah i've got all these warhammers i should do something with them um because i used to love them and then i got i just picked up my bloody angels army where i left off almost and i was like oh yeah i really like this game why did i ever quit and it, it wasn't until like years later that i actually put two together and two to two together and was like oh it was just because basically dad ran me everywhere and i didn't have that anymore and I didn't have a carry case, so I was a bit like Colin, you know, like just grab a box, throw all the models in it, and like you're trying not to, you don't want the paint to chip off. There's no padding yeah. in the box, you know, yeah. like it was just an absolute nightmare. So, um, yeah, that was that was that's the, the hardship when you cannot afford a carry case. I guess when you're a kid, learn to ask your parents for a carry case. You're gonna you're gonna use a lot of it in the in the long run, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> invest a lot in toilet roll or whatever tissue paper. <laughs> yeah, kitchen paper. Every model wrapped in kitchen paper. Yeah, right. Um, I found. What about my you, own. Mark? <laughs> you, All right. You're gonna try and present whatever you found again. Uh, I'm gonna try, but I don't know if this is gonna actually work. Why is it not okay. letting me show? Because this? you made such a shit show of it last time. It's like Tony, you cannot present. I feel because like Google, Google has become sentient and has decided that. I, would you like to unpresent? To try and, and to be honest, I don't blame it. I, I don't blame <laughs> it. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't let me present either. I'm okay. afraid it's not the best quality picture ever. Um, hang on, hang on. This is, this is just about working. We are just about there. Come on, window. Present window. There it is. Share. Is it going to come up? Oh, that. That one. I remember that. And it was that one. And I just thought it was so cool. What Ironically, you? I hate plasma cannons because I hate guns that kill yourself. But. Yeah. I just thought that bit of art was so cool. Which December was that? What year? Do you know? Uh, oh, 240. That's must have been about 98, 99. Yeah. Mm. Well, I don't think I've ever seen that art, honestly. No, I've, I don't, it was really, it's taken me this long to track it down. Yeah. Because I don't think it's, I can't think of it being used anywhere except the cover of this white dwarf. God, and yeah, now I look back at it, it's like it's a bit janky. The posters of the random funny. pictures below there, and I'm trying to work out who and what they all are. But oh, it's because there's other codex covers and things like that. Um, yeah. Oh, and I made a meme. Okay, it's, 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 it's completely irrelevant for what we're talking about. But I made this uh, meme for my physics students. Okay, and then I attached it to the desk and laptops and behind biology <laughs> teachers' desks. Fair enough. This all is right. a dumb question. How well can you guys see that model there? Uh, reasonably, yeah. Was that was not, that not the plasma? Was that the plasma cannon before yeah, the, the one that you just yes, the old showed. plasma cannon? Yeah. Hmm. Um, so was that the first time they released the plasma cannon with all the wires and stuff? I guess. Yeah. Mm. So that 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 issue that I showed you there was the release of the hybrid metal plastic 
uh, Devastator kit. You know the one that had the big backpack? Ah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's that yeah. one. When Devastator's got, like, actual not just Marines with a gun attached to one arm, basically. Yeah. yeah. Which um, is... And I still think they're the best-looking Devastator models. I think they're better than the more modern kit. I really do. The, the hybrid metal, metal, the hybrid metal, metal I do like the way the Horus Heresy ones look a lot like the old ones used to. That's, mm. that's kind of cool to me. Um, okay. I initially got started with Blood Angels. Um, the first thing, I, the first box that I bought for them, I bought with a 25% off discount voucher at one of the early 90s games days, and I bought uh, Space Hulk with Blood Angels Terminators in them and Gene Steelers. Uh, oh, yeah. That's my intro to what Blood Angels were from there. Um, I played a bunch of games as I grew up. I didn't really have much focus on 40k. Uh, and then I went to uni and stopped doing any kind of Warhammer whatsoever because money when you're a student is irrelevant, really. Um, then I got back into the hobby a few years later when I realized I had A, dis uh, disposable income, and B, spent far too much time on World of Warcraft to the point where I was just like living in it. I decided that whenever they turn the servers off for this game, I'm going to have nothing left for shows for my time. So I figured I'd spend some money on some Warhammer models, buy them, paint them, and it'd be cool. And uh, yeah, why not Blood Angels? I used to like them. They were kind of cool. Their fluff was nice. So I uh, uh, bought some Blood Angels, uh, painted them a bit, went to a few tournaments, and kind of developed from there. You know what? I actually thought the exact same that thought. That was 6th like... edition, sort of. Th I think I got end of 6th edition. Sorry. I was I was playing WoW in like 2010 and was like, what have I got to show for this? Yeah. And I should get I mean, the amount of money that you spend on this game, mm. I, I need something to show. So I mean, I've got a load show for it. I got all the memories, I've got all the friends I've made, all the, mm. all the time I've spent with those people. I go on holiday with them every year, and this is a great time. I don't regret it in the slightest, but there's nothing physically to show for it, really. So. The real yeah. treasure is the friends we made along the way. I mean you're you're not wrong. There it is true. As, as piss take as I am. Uh, I've never played World of Warcraft. Um, um as a game is, it's an is, okay game yeah as a vehicle for playing multiplayer with people yeah. it's pretty good the, the two reasons actually one i hate people and i don't like playing multiplayer <laughs> uh, but the other one the main one genuinely this is true because i went to university in 2005 mm -hmm. uh, to, to study physics yeah and on my course, 2005 was around the launch of World of Warcraft. I think it was 2004, 2005. And the very late 2004 was when it released, yeah. yeah. So you've got very to think, then, this will be time. September time 2005. So it's at the height of it's really exploding at the moment. And yep. all the other people on the course, physicists or physics students, they're quite nerdy. <laughs> really? And Really? Mind, but I remember some of the guys, and I saw them in like the first couple of lectures at the time, and they all got World of Warcraft for their new computers to do this course yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And then they just vanished. Yeah. And we never saw them again. I yeah. spent loads of time yeah. uh, down my friendly local gaming store playing Hero Clicks and Magic the Gathering and Battletech Warrior games and stuff with them every week. And then World of Warcraft comes along and suddenly I just yeah. drop off and the map as far as these people are concerned. That's it what it was like. You, you'd bump into one of them like six months later and they're like sallow skin because they hadn't seen yeah. the light in six months and you're like what have you been doing it's like oh yeah well we're playing a little world of warcraft Indeed. and you know and then they got house together and they just used to sit in there out and it was like whoa this game is a serious it was like watching someone develop a heroin addiction and <laughs> right so it, moving it on scary that i wouldn't ever touch it this is so fair. i went with warhammer instead which is yeah definitely not addictive in any way or... shape or form problematic in the slightest like that mm. no uh, oh shit! Have I clicked on a different um, thing? You're broken, haven't you? Uh, no, I just selected a different window so that when I tried to move on to the next thing, it it didn't quite work. There we go. The lore, the history, and the narrative of the Blood Angels is is actually pretty rich, based on the fact that the Primarch that is uh, the progenitor of the Blood Angels is one of the key figures in the tiny throwaway offhand comment Games Workshop made way back when when they first posited the existence of the Horus Heresy. Um, and he became like the golden, clearly, uh, angelic hero of the setting, who sacrificed himself for the good of everybody else. Um, and Tony was going on a little bit earlier about the lore of who the Blood Angels were before Sanguinius was found, so do you want to pick that up again briefly? Sure. All right, I'll do it from sort of the start, because I can do it, tell it a bit quicker than as a timeline. So, um, Blood Angels, Ninth Legion, now they're founded... And they quite quickly pick up a quite dark reputation. Um, their gene seed, like I mentioned earlier, is a bit special because it can convert more or less anybody into uh, 
into a into a space brain. You've got to remember back then the GNC was much more potent as well. It was, now it's much more degraded than it was. So they picked up this nickname, the Eaters of the Dead, because of their habit, not only of passing down, as I mentioned earlier, the memories, but also they would eat their enemies. And they would use that and the uh, Amatophagia? Yeah, thing? that sounds about right. Um, to it's, it's something to like that, about, if it's not exactly that. Yeah, to learn, to learn about their enemies. And they got this pretty unsavoury reputation. And they, along with the Warhounds, got a quite bad reputation amongst the, the Terran officials. And they became a bit of an embarrassment because they were quite an unsavoury bunch. They didn't have any of the beauty or the nobility of the Blood Angels. And so the generals at the time, they sort of got together and they made a decision, well, we, we're going to get rid of these guys. So we're only just leaving Earth at this point. The unification wars are over, but we haven't conquered the solar system yet. So they sent the Blood Angels to Neptune. It was Neptune, not Titan. Um, so they sent the Blood Angels at the time, the Eaters of the Dead, to Neptune to die, basically. Uh, it was in the hands of mutants and warlords, and it was in a real, it was a really dangerous place. It was about as far away as anyone would ever get. And they knew it would take years for the main bulk of the forces to catch them up. So they sent the, uh, the Eaters of the Dead ahead to Neptune, and they went there with about 14,000 soldiers. And then they disappeared. And then a few years later, the what was becoming the crusade caught up and got to Neptune and found it conquered in the name of the emperor and found about 14,000 eaters of the dead. And it turns out that they had decided, because they didn't have the equipment, they were really low on equipment and supplies and everything else. They were down to fighting with their bare hands and that. They were converting the mutants of Neptune into more space marines to replace those that died. Um, and then that became an even more embarrassment because apart from the fact that they were now woefully under-equipped, they mm. still had the same amount of people they started with. So they kept doing this. They were throwing into meat grinder after meat grinder, the most appalling conditions, the most awful uh, death worlds and hell storms, trying to get rid of this embarrassment. And every time they would stoically come back with about the same numbers that they went with. Um, and this kind of thing of eating some of them and converting other ones became their kind of shtick. They got darker and a worse and worse reputation. And along with the Warhounds at the time, who of course went off to become um, the uh, World Eaters, they were this absolute embarrassment. And then when Sanguinius was discovered on Baal Secundus. Yeah, yes. right. let's go with that. Um, and he went to his sons and bowed down to them, famously. Um, and he didn't come to them as a king. He came to them as a as a as a penitent almost. Mm, supplicant, yeah. And he vowed to cleanse their reputation and cleanse their because they had these dark urges. And in order to do so, is where we got the graces that we now talk about, which I'm sure Mark's going to be able to elaborate on a little bit more. So we have the the graces and the virtues for the for the blood angels, and he was his way of controlling these urges was to push them to to study, to produce these great works of art, and it was a way of directing their focus. So covering up the bloodlust to hold it back was to focus absolutely, becoming uh, an expert in say painting or sculpting or song or poetry, and he changed his reputation of his um, blood angels by turning them into these kind of noble warriors. And it took a long while when they fought against all, you know, Sanguinius took his Eaters of the Dead and he fought famously alongside Horus to try and change people's perception of his of his sons. And he did, he succeeded. He turned the most reviled legion into the the poster boys for the, for the emerging in, um, Imperium of Man. And he did that sheer massive effort on his part to change everybody's perception and turn these monsters into artists and at the time it was how he changed the name to blood angels now we did an episode on the law a while ago and if you want the sort of more in-depth look at that it's probably worth a look at it but i just think it was fantastic the fact that we went from the most reviled to the most beloved at the behest of sanguinius 
Yep. After Horus uh, rebelled, after he fell to chaos and decided he was going to try and take on the Emperor, the first thing he did was to go and uh, pretend that he was still loyal and send Sanguinius off and his legion to some world somewhere uh, to try and get rid of them because Sanguinius... Signus Prime, is it? Sorry? Signus Prime, yeah. Prime. Uh, because he was afraid that Sanguinius would be his strongest rival uh, for the Chaos Powers uh, in, in his place, potentially. So he sent them off to this this world, Cygnus Prime, had the entire system draped in a warp shadow, and then they were attacked by a uh, Slanishy demon, I think, called Kyris, um, and a corn demon called Kabanda. And they basically unleashed what would eventually become the Red Thirst. They drenched the Blood Angels that were present there in a huge rage of, of uh, violence and blood drinking and horror. That only eventually ended when uh, I think an apothecary sacrificed himself for Sanguinius to try and help him to break free uh, and break and beat Commander off, and so they could escape and go from there. Um, then they went off to the galaxy had been like shrouded with this great big sort of like warp storm thing called the Ruin Storm, uh, and on one side of it you've got Terra, uh, and on the other side of it you've got uh, the Ultramarines and the Blood Angels and a few other legions as well. So the Blood Angels head off to McCrag to go and try and uh, coordinate with Gilliman. And Gilliman famously meets up with Sanguinius and the Lion. Um, and Kurz is there as well, being all dickish because he's the Night Haunter. Um, and Gilliman and the Lion and Sanguinius think that the Imperium has been destroyed and the Emperor's dead. So they declare the Imperium Secundus. And therefore, naturally, the person who should be the new emperor in their stead should be Sanguinius, because he's the best of all of them. Uh, so that went on for a little while, until they logically figured out, somehow through some reasoning or, or a vision somewhere, that the emperor was probably still alive, and Terra's still kicking around, and oh shit, they've, they've gone and maybe done some heresy by declaring Sanguinius emperor, and maybe they should go and try and break through this, this great big warp veil, uh, and go to Terra's rescue, which they do. Um, and doing so, um, one of the members of the Sanguinia, Sanguinary Guard had been named Sanguinius Herald to be able to take petitions in his place while he was busy somewhere. And he was given an honorific title, a title called the Sanguinor. Uh, and during the journey through the Ruined Storm, um, the Sanguinor sacrificed himself to free Sanguinius from another uh, great demon of uh, Chaos Unbound, I think, or for Chaos Powers. Uh, and in doing so, he becomes trapped in a warp rift and becomes a warp creature in and of himself. And thus is the Sanguinor, as he's known in modern 40k formed. And they head off to Terra. The Siege of Terra happens. Lots of violence happens. Sanguinius goes and fights Horus and dies. Um, and then the Blood Angels are all sort of like left a bit adrift from there, really. Yeah, it's quite fun about the whole Black Rage thing, because there's there's a whole debate and a whole talk, hours and hours and hours of the nature of chaos and time in the 41st millennium. But the idea is that the death of Sanguinius was so powerful to the Blood Angels genetically mm. that it not only worked for um, at the time to send them all into this kind of horrific rage, but it actually worked backwards in time and forwards in time. Mm. So the tribe are given a certain aspect of the Emperor's powers, and Sanguinius's powers that he had aspect wise was some psychic potential. So that played a part in, in, in that transmission as well. So it's sort of like the death screen is not happened in the past. They're not remembering the past. They see it as now because to them it is now because in the warp time is meaningless. So mm -hmm. because time being meaningless, it's constantly happening. It's still in process. There's some really cool stuff about the, um, the frozen soul of Sanguinius is still on the ventral spirit, uh, moving around it. Which we might which find is, out more about with the ongoing current Siege of Terror. hopes to find some more about. Yeah, yeah, which would be nice. Have you guys both read End in the Death now, part two or what? Oh, God. Um, I'm three quarters of the way through End in the Death part one. I haven't started two yet. Okay. No, I haven't, I haven't read it yet. Gu Gunhammer's sure review of two I thought was very, very good, which is if you're reading Warhammer stuff, you're probably going to read this. But frankly, you shouldn't have to, because it is such a it's drag. such an iconic story, isn't such it? Such a slog, such a dragged out story thing. But uh, 
yeah, we're going to read it because it's the death of Sanguinius. It's kind of an iconic moment in the whole Blood yeah. Angel's history. So we're going to have to read it at some point or listen to it, one or two. Have you then, John? No, I didn't. I I sent Games Workshop an email that morning of that pre-order that basically said, your website sucks. <laughs> I hate I hate my life because I just wasted my whole morning and please do better in the future. And right. I actually got a reply from them saying, we understand your frustration, but... Um, Yes, it was. But tough uh, shit, pal. Yeah, um, they actually, they. I think they, the, the whoever replied to me was in, was in good good form. But yeah, it was. Okay. Um, I tried to. I really did. I was there super early in the pre order, but I didn't get it. It's fine. Fair Do you know what? I probably wouldn't even if I got the pre order. Though I'm, I have struggled to get through the Horus Heresy series. I it's don't know why. Slug. Um, some of them are good. Well, some I, of them are written really well by really good authors. Some of them are slogs. Yeah, I, I know why you've struggled to get for it because some of them are not very well written. Some of them are, are downright yeah. bad books. <laughs> yeah. So my but, problem, my problem is when I struggle with a book, I just fall back to what I know, and yeah. I'll fall back to, and then I'll go read like three books by an author that I love, and then maybe I'll come back, and then if yeah. I. And then that's the thing. I'll struggle with the next book in the series, and then and then yeah. So You've I'm, I'm absolutely way behind. got the right to spend your time how you enjoy it, and not mm. being frustrated by your it legend took time, me which is fine. A very long time to get through the mainline horror heresy, and I haven't read the Siege of Terror series. Yeah. I've read the whole of the main heresy series now. So this I artwork is the front Siege cover from Siege of Terror book two when. They've, they've just landed and they're doing their first steps to try and assault the outer walls of the Imperial Palace. And Sanguinis is obviously there doing his heroism stuff, which is fine. Yeah. Those of no, you who don't did know. Just what... read yeah, this, though, which has a lot of stuff about the Black Rage in yep. it. Yeah. Because obviously, Astrath is kind yep. of the angel of mercy who deals with the Black Rage. And I genuinely like that book, actually. I got through it very quickly. But the thing is, yep. is Guy Haley. And if you know Guy Haley, he writes a lot of Blood Angels Guy books. Guy Haley and... has written some very good stuff. He's written some of the best books uh, that we can recommend, which is you, certainly You've got a slide on books we recommend, haven't you? In a minute. Yeah, that's coming up next after this one. Yeah. Um, the Black Rage, for those of you who don't know what it is, if you're a Blood Angel fan, you don't know what it is, then uh, okay, fine. You're about to learn. Um, when Sanguinius died fighting Horus, the psychic shockwaves of his brutal murder at the hands of his former brother, now corrupted arch traitor, echoed throughout the sort of like the psychic resonances of all of his Blood Angel children. And every so often, a Blood Angel falls to the Black Rage when they get overtaken by this trauma. And they suddenly get visions where they think they are Sanguinius fighting Horus and his little minions all aboard the Vengeful Spirit. And they go completely bug nut psycho and, and freak out and wreck everything around them. Um, so that's the idea of what the Black Rage is, essentially. It was great the way it used to be represented in rules in game because it used to take every mo Blood Angel model you had on the table and roll a dice for them. And on like roll of a one, one model would fall to Black Rage. You take it out of the squad and replace it with a Death Company model. That was kind of cool. See, so sometimes you were really happy because a tactical marine became a Death Company marine, which yeah. is a lot better. And then sometimes you'd be really sad because one of your 50 point Terminators would then become a Death Company marine and lose his Terminator armor and equipment. Yeah, which is not. Um, <laughs> and that was quite a sad, sad moment. Modern Blood Angel lore following that is Blood Angels after Sanguinius' death, they basically do their thing. These days they're led by a chapter commander called... Oh, the, the Legion got split up into chapters of a thousand because that's the way Gilliman decreed it and they basically agreed to split up because they didn't stick their finger up at it like the Lions did and the Wolves did. Um, the main Blood Angels chapter is led by a chap called Dante who is one of the oldest living space marines who remain uh, active and living and fighting. Uh, they've got a whole load of notable characters, Astarath, the leader of the Chaplains, and Redeemer of the Lost, people who fall to the Black Rage, it is his job and the job of those who follow him to make sure they all die in battle, and if they don't die in battle, then they definitely did die in battle, honest gov, and not by my axe. Um, there's the Apothecary, Corbulo, who, uh, whose task it is, self-appointed task, to try and find a cure for the Black Rage, and it's a doomed thing that he's probably never going to find. There's Mephiston, the like, chief librarian, who is basically kind of up. fell to the Black Rage, up. but came out of it the other side with a completely different new personality, and is all sorts of psychically was powerful because of that. 
There's Lamartis, the chaplain who fell to the Black Rage but didn't die and can kind of control and direct it. So he's still alive and kicking around and gets he, put He's in still stasis. in the process. He's still fallen. Yeah. But he was able to hold on to himself enough that they just keep him in stasis and drop him on various war zones. Which is um, amazing. Yeah. So that's kind of the Blood Angel at the moment. Um, I used to like the old rule in third. Same time you had the rule for me men running off to the death company. Every single yeah. turn, you would have to roll a dice. And on a one, you'd have to move whatever unit it was towards the nearest enemy, mm. which was fine, except if it was your tanks or your devastators who then couldn't shoot back in that old edition. Because Blood Angels uh, organizations the other way around to all the other chapters. So all the other chapters, you do your scout. Then you become a devastator because you know you keep them back out of out of trouble and things like that. Um, then you become an assault marine, and then you become a tactical marine. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I know this. Whereas the blood angels do it the other way around because they know they can't control the newly sort of minted space marines. You start as an assault marine, and the devastators are the most experienced because they're the most likely to not they, run they three towards the nearest to enemy. Stand back and shoot, and and not actually go fire their guns. Yeah. There is one major law point that I haven't mentioned, which is modern Blood Angels law that is obviously worth mentioning for those who, who are aware of it. Um, with recent um, law updates in 40k where Gilliman came back and the Eye of Terror split part of the galaxy again, uh, the Blood Angel homeworld of Baal was under siege by a huge amount of Tyranids in an event known as the Devastation of Baal. Um, Chapter Master Dante gathered as many Blood Angels as he could, basically all of them, to the home world to try and, and defend the success of the world, for that matter. Um, he was shockingly successful. Not all of the Blood Angels died. Most of them did, but enough of them survived and lived so that they still actually existed as a, a, a identity. Um, even Commander, the corn demon who had a big Barney with Sanguinius back in the day, turned up and killed a bunch of Tyranids because he's like, you're not going to kill the Blood Angels. I'm going to kill the Blood Angels, bitches. You, you, this, some of them are going to be mine, so screw you, Tyranids. Um, and that is the reason for why most of the Blood Angels now are all dead and being replaced by Primaris, because most yeah. of them died in the um, wars against the Tyranids. At the same time, Dante become uh, regent of the Imperium Secundus. Uh, Nihilus, but yes. Nihilus, sorry, yeah. Which, which is, is everything Imperium. north of the Great Rift. Yeah. Um, so south of the Great Rift is as decreed by Gilliman himself, who remembered uh, how noble Sanguinius he was, yeah. and uh, bestowed this honor upon Dante in his memory. Yeah. Uh, so the south of the Great Rift is ruled by Gilliman, and north of the Great Rift is not north. I know uh, ridiculous, but um, Spinwood yeah. of the Great Rift uh, is ruled by by Dante. Yeah. Um, despite the fact that the lion's kicking around and on that the side as well, around, but we haven't really them. seen how that's going to affect anything yet. Yeah, that's true. Um, other interesting things so, we've got a fair few quite important um successor chapters. So, when we mentioned earlier that they were split into the different chapters, so main one obviously is the Blood Angels. We've got the Flesh Terrors, um, we've got who else have we got? Flesh Terrors. The Knights of Baal, but they were wiped out in the devastation of Baal. We've got who else? I'm having a blind blank. The Lamenters, but the Lamenters only found out recently that they're actually also cursed with being Blood Angel successors and are now all falling to the Black Rage. Um, have you got the list there of successor chapters? So we've got sanguine, Blood Drinkers, Carmen. Angels Sanguine, the Angels and Carmine, the Angels of Million. I thought the Angels of yeah. Million were wiped out as well, weren't they? Well, the Fresh Terrors are clearly the most famous ones. Yeah. Um, so there's a few successor chapters. Flesh yeah. Terrors, the most, I think Flesh Terrors, and then probably the Lamenters. But we only recently found out again, Lamenters are blood new successors, and that's just because sucks to be a Lamenter. And it's like, what else can we do that's horrible to them? I know. Let's give them the Black Rage. Pretty much. Um, books we recommend. Yeah. Everything by Guy Haley. There's like four Blood Angels books, right? So there's a series uh, of four books written by Guy Haley, which are all modern Blood Angel novels. <laughs> there's Dante, which is the story of Commander Dante from childhood through to joining the Blood Angels. There's The Devastation of Baal, which is the story of the Siege of the Tyranids besieging Baal and the big fight happening there. And it is one of the best Siege novels I've written. Um, 
I can't recommend it highly enough. The first half is really good build up night before the battle kind of atmosphere and the second half is just death and awesome. it's just yeah it's just bolt of porn in its best possible way the third book uh written by guy haley is called darkness in the blood it covers mephiston uh and him changing from a firstborn to a primaris and also dante narrating to a random human he's come across somewhere how he came from joining the Blood Angels to being the commander that he is today uh, and becoming chapter master and so forth. I'd um, say it's not quite as good as the first two in that trilogy. I would agree. And the fourth one, which is not really a part of the series, but is in the same sort of time frame as Darkness in the Blood, yeah. is the book John showed off just now, Astarath, uh, written by Guy Haley, which is kind of like a separate story uh, covering Astarath going off somewhere to go and deal with some Blood Angels who fall into the Black Rage. Uh, and is famous for being the first instance of Blood Angels who are Primaris Marines falling to the Black Rage. Is it the first I thought that was with um, Mephiston was the first ones, because in Darkness of the Blood. I th yeah, I think this is either set concurrent or might be, just yeah. before it or something, so it, it's around that sort of time. Um, other modern Blood Angels books that we probably should mention is the Mephiston trilogy. Um, Which I've not read, and City I've of heard Light. not great things about, I'll be honest. Um, they're dreadful. So we don't recommend They are the worst. You know, people take the mick out of, I guess I mentioned, I say again, Bolter porn of uh, Black Library books just being, raw brothers kill, Bolters, yes. I mean, it's the worst of that. It's in, in the books, Mephiston is this kind of absolute Mary Sue of Mary Sue's of <laughs> ridiculousness. So what happened is everything is going wrong, but Mephiston. Mephiston then stops time, uses mind bullets, melts the thing, kills this guy, melts this thing, and everything actually is all right. So everything will go to tits, and it'll be, but then Mephiston, and will do whatever magic ridiculousness solves everybody's problem and comes out on top. John, and any books? Oh, sorry. It, it's ridiculous. It was really there not a bit like that in Darkness of the Blood? Sorry? Or was there not a bit like that in Darkness of the Blood where they were summoning something? Yeah. And it was like Mephiston flying around, shooting mind bullets, stealing everything, yeah. and then you get him on the tabletop, you put him on the tabletop, Mephiston rolls his six attacks, oh, he missed every time. Yeah. Great. Oh, okay, let's move on. There was a bit in um, Devastation of Baal as well, where he was an ultimate badass, where he flies off in a Thunderhawk, jumps out of the back of the Thunderhawk, sprouts these giant blood wings, kills these tyrannid beasties that are flying after them, then leads the Librarius in a venture into the realm of corn itself to try and do. I don't know why he goes there, to be honest. He's, I he's, know he's going there. The 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 coming. Devast... Why are we going to go to corn's blood? What the fuck's that? Yeah, about? yeah, um, no, yeah they're, they're, they're dreadful. They are truly awful. And after coming off the back of the um, Devastation trilogy, which, although the last one was a bit ropey, the other two were amazing. I was so disappointed. Mm. Um, other good stuff uh, the Blood Quest novels. The they Blood did do a Quest reprint of them, novels, yeah. older them, which they're, was Blood Quest 1 and 2. They're comic books, and they're brilliant. They're, they're really atmospheric. Animals, but... They're very cool, very sort of like heavy rock sort of Blood Angel feeling. Um, there was the Raphael Blood Angels series. Don't read those. They're awful. <laughs> Uh, there was a, there was a Lamartis novel, which is kind of cool to read if you're more interested in the whole well, sort of Black that, Rage yeah. battle. Uh, it's either. not amazing, but it's definitely not bad in the slightest. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's quite good. Um, there was a Sanguinius the Great Angel novel, um, which is part of the Horus Heresy Primark series that goes into who Sanguinius is, uh, his reputation, the darkness underneath it with the uh, red mm -hmm. thirst that he and his children all have. Um, Horus I, Heresy... think, I was a bit disappointed with that one. I thought it was going to be really good, and then it was all right. Yeah, yeah, that's um, fair. Two Horus, he has, two Horus Heresy novels that focus a lot on Blood Angels would be uh, Fear to Tread, which covers the whole Cygnus Prime thing that I mentioned earlier, and a book called Ruined Storm, which covers them leaving Imperium Secundus and doing the whole event that I mentioned again earlier with the formation of yeah. Sanguinor and so on. Those are the ones, that's about all I'd recommend, really. That's all the sort of main ones. There's plenty of short stories and appearances in other ones. Yeah. And there's that whole um, murder uh, sequence in the original three books. Was that the first yeah. book? There's a classic uh, Space Hulk series um, yeah. where they all go on Space Hulks and do their things because they're all Which is why we, we still love Terminators. Historically, we have more oh, Terminators than anybody else. 
Um, and sure. we have more dreadnoughts and we have more tanks. People going, oh no, tanks and dreadnoughts aren't very blood angels. We had more than any other legion. Um, I did see that when I was flicking through this book just a few minutes ago. Uh, it said, I know this is off topic, but it did say that Blood Angels First Company has 20 Terminator squads, Dreadnoughts, Rhinos and Land Raiders. Yep. And then Second Company has six, to, six Tactical Squads, two Assault Squads and two Devastator Squads, Dreadnoughts, Rhinos, Land Speeders and Bikes. So yes, for everybody that says that apparently Blood Angels don't have many Dreadnoughts, well, we've got them in both First and Second yeah, Country. Yeah. With, with the longest living Space Marines, for some reason the floor also means that Blood Angel Space Marines tend to live. If which not, I suppose oh, makes sense, because vampires well, are supposed yeah. to be like, living. Far longer than other legions, uh, which also makes them very good at being in Dreadnoughts. Mm. At the very bottom of this page, they just put this here in case we didn't know it, which is kind of funny. It says, Blood Angels Death Company is an ad hoc formation, so it does not appear in the chapter organisation. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> yes, um, those crazy bastards over there that are all wanting to kill everything and anything that they see they don't conform to the chapter standard yes i wonder why <laughs> um but you yeah, know i i've read the modern books that you all mentioned by guy haley i like them all i've got the blood quest novels i like them i've tried that mephiston series that uh tony mentioned and mm -hmm. didn't get too far in it so it might be another one i think that like i think i find some 40k books hard when there's a lot of stuff about the warp because like mm -hmm. that was what i figured struggled with the horus heresy book when they're like in and out of the warp they're talking about like warp stuff and it's like it's 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 maybe my imagination doesn't compute the warp as well as um maybe it's all a bit weird and they yeah. can justify different authors describing it in different ways because it's the warp and it's chaos it can be a whole different way every single time you go there potentially. Yeah. So it's all a bit weird mm -hmm rather than a consistent point of view. But I'm 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 really hoping so since the last book, since um Darkness of the Blood, obviously Commander Dandy has gone through the Primaris Rubicon and that was heavily hinted at in Darkness of the Blood. Yeah. With him basically we wanting to go through them. They yeah. wouldn't let him. They yeah. wouldn't let him because it was too dangerous for the chapter, so it was Mephiston that ended up going through. I do want to read the Lion's Return book in a novel form because in yeah. that Dante I've finds the lion and yeah. by that point he's already primaris so there yeah. might be something but, in there that i haven't read up yet oh, well, I've, I've got my hit the, list. Um, the arcs of omen book and there really isn't much on it in no no they gloss over it completely as a source book yeah which is really quite annoying that's why i'm hoping so, the lion and the is it the sons of the forest i think the novel's called yeah i think yeah. so you yeah. think you're right i'm hoping, I'm hoping that guy that haley has there. has written a book and well, we're he's just, just published another book recently which is nothing to do with Blood Angels whatsoever, but I have picked it up because the concept of it sounded awesome and it's just quite audible, which is called Gene Father. And the whole concept of this book is um, Belisarius Call hosts a symposium somewhere where he invites all the greatest minds in the galaxy to come together and talk shop. And um, what's, that, what's the name of that? Um, what's the name of that? Uh, Bad guy. Uh, Fabius Boyle. Yeah, Fabius Bile says, right, well, I'm the greatest scientist in the galaxy, so I'm going to rock up because I deserve to. And you've got this whole sort of like call versus Bile face-off thing build on the front cover, and that sounds like it should be fun. So I'm hoping that will be. Uh, but that's the the only reason I mention that is because that's the latest Guy Haley project that's been released in the last like month or so. So maybe he's working on something else now. Who knows? Yeah, let's hope, let's hope Blood Angels get a range refresh. I've heard rumours... That there's going to be a Dark Angels range refresh, so maybe Blood or, Angels could get a refresh with the or brand new book. in the preview due to happen in the coming Saturday from where we are filming this, which will be the Saturday before that's just gone before by from out, yeah. watching this. Uh, they might show off something Dark Angels in there, and it might be one model, it might be a new Dark Angel lieutenant, and we just don't know. We don't know. True. I, I really have to read it in that regard because I still hate those models. I like the wings, but yeah. I, I like the wings, but everything else about them I really dislike. So this is a bit where John gets to shine after Tony and I have just talked our bollocks off for the last three quarters now, half an hour, Probably, talking yeah. about all the lore and story and things. Tony, uh, Tony. Tony, yeah. Well, John. all I'm going to say is, no, the Terminators. <laughs> Not the Terminators. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, we like uh, John, this is your thing. I was going to say, we've, we have done videos on this before as well on the channel, so you should check those out too. 
uh, if you want to know Try how to start too salty. Maybe how Blood Angels. I was going to say, Blood Angels are, are known for their melee. I actually think their melee rules in 10th edition are fine. I just think, in general, the melee rules in 10th edition are very, very high skill and difficult to use effectively. So, for the most part, we're Space Marines. We do everything good that Space Marines do, which is shooting and which is surviving and uh, objective control and stuff like that. But then Blood Angels obviously have our melee specific units uh, which are the death company and which are the sangry guard which were two brilliant units arguably slightly different roles uh the death company just want to charge in and kill everything the sangry guard maybe want a bit more durable stealthy but still do kill everything and i think it's an it's a it's 10th edition is an annoying place right now for for blood angels players because um we, we're waiting for a codex i guess uh, and it's almost a case of you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, Mark. I said it's not a good thing to get your codex, the first codex of the edition, because um, you then have to deal with three years of power creep. But if you don't get your codex early this edition, then you have to wait a very, very long time. My daughter is up, so uh, one of you guys will need to take over. I'll be back in a sec. I think we should sit here in silence until he returns. Hmm? I think we just sit here in silence. Just stare at the at the stuff that the wearing chainsaw blade All right, well let, let's talk about in law the crazy how psycho they death company guy. because in law we have a lot of terminator armor we have a lot of dreadnoughts i've already mm -hmm. joked about that a little bit um but in law all of our marines would really like to be closer to sanguinius and that's where yeah. the whole flying thing comes from yeah which so is, this is where i was gonna go as well we like bikes uh, Dante famously was a bike uh, marine yep. until he got his jump pack. Um, but ultimately, Blood Angels like to emulate Sanguinius by flying through the air, hence a lot of focus on jump packs and speed. So combining that with the melee pilot. focus John mentioned before, you have a lot of jump pack stuff moving quite fast compared to regular infantry. they got a lot of melee punch to them. So they want to close, they want to rip and tear and smash and clobber. and That's kind of the overarching feel. We also have that... a lot of emphasis on flyers as well for the same yeah. reason. So we tend to have... The, the Storm Raven used to be a Blood Angels unique yeah. unit. And we would still have more emphasis on flyers today if flyers were not shit in the game. Yeah. Which but is... it's, from a law point of view, yeah. we like flying because it makes us closer to Sanguinius. We like ripping and tearing because it Indeed. solves the blood loss problem. Um, yeah. And we like Terminators because we've got a lot of Terminator armor. We like Dreadnoughts because yep. we live a long time. And, and we like and tanks because they go fast. And we quite Terminators like going are fast also... we can't fly. Driving fast is the nearest best thing. Terminator armor is 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 built as like uh, each of them is a relic of thousands yeah. and thousands of years and lovingly maintained and uh, decorated by the Blood Angels as they go along. So that's another thing that uh, means yeah. shiny Terminators stuff. We like shiny, like the magpies basically, yeah. uh, but not quite as bad as Blood Ravens. Tricks that Blood Angels tend to have are things that give them extra speed, extra punch in melee, extra ways that they can sacrifice themselves to the benefit and safety of their brethren. Um, I think that's that's kind of the summary of it, really. I think so. Uh, John, uh, you're back. Yeah. Yes. But, Iconic yeah, units. I was going to say, we used to also get like attack bikes and speeders. Very, yeah. very common with Blood Angels. I guess with the release of the Primaris, attack bikes are not really a thing. Not many people have adopted Invader ATVs yet. And the new speeders are definitely not nearly as common. So, um, they're just I, huge. Yeah. They're, they're very big and they're not really quite, they're not, not speedery, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, the old ones were little and light. They're and more quick. like light floating tanks than, than fast, yeah. nippy, scouty things, really. Yeah. Um, so I think if you're Blood Angels right now, you kind of have to think about adapting to the future because the future looks different. Um, yeah. But I think you probably just have to embrace a bit of change because yeah. things are changing. So something that is important to note is that as far as possible, we are a Codex compliant chapter. Unlike the, the, um, the Dark Angels and the Space Wolves who said, up yours to Gilliman, we're not following the Codex. The Blood Angels said, well, it would have been uh, rounder on them that, um, yeah, yeah it said would. thank you very much mr gilliman we will do as you tell us and we reorganize along the lines of the as far as they could along lines of the codex imperial um so 
the Cody Valderon squadron. being the first captain beneath Sanguinius uh, yeah. when Sanguinius was when Sanguinius died. So we do make extensive use of, as the Codex decrees, tactical squads and mm. tanks and shooting doctrines and, and tactical doctrines and all that. So if you if you are playing in the current version with sort of gladius style combat, which you put in the auction as well, you are playing as they are officially in law. That is yeah. how they do it. Yeah. They just have a predisposition to quite like melee and they quite like going fast and flying. Mm. And you might chuck a few iconic units in. Yeah, absolutely. Alongside it. Um they are officially a fully encompassing mm. kind of tactical um tactical thing. So that's that's something that's quite important. And people sometimes think, oh no, it's got to be golden host. There's only 21 sanguinary guard, and most of them got eaten. Yeah, so all of them are like, like two got eaten, right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I mean there could obviously be more of them. I mean, you can make some more, but yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean ultimately, those sanguinary are... guard are just like veterans who've been elevated to position of bodyguard of the chapter commander. Yeah, I think that's a good point, and I honestly think some Blood Angels players are struggling with it in the moment, in yeah. that, like, some people really do like the, the play style that was Blood Angels of last edition, or the last two editions, or last three, maybe even, which was, like, you are 100% melee-focused, and, mm. and you do not take yeah. any guns, and you do not... Well, I mean... You have oh. pistols, yeah. but you don't take any tanks. You don't take any any heavy support or anything like that. You don't take any dreadnoughts. But yeah. what Tony said is right. Lore. We're yeah. doing the lower. And the other thing that, that that's a really important thing, Tony, I think is what you you touched on in that there is only twenty one Sangri Guard or twenty five Sangri Guard in the entire galaxy. The Blood Angels have like a thousand Space Marines, so arguably that's point two five of a single percent. So well, when that's... It's not technically true. There's like twenty between twenty to twenty five Sanguinary Guard in the Blood Angels chapter, mm -hmm. and each of the other successory chapters, their own chapter master will have their own Sanguinary Guard as well. Yeah, sure, sure, but it'll still but be the same. In the thousand Blood Angels there are. Yeah, twenty five, right? So like um, that is less than one percent. Yeah. And yeah. the same with the Death Company. There is a Death Company, but the Death Company is wiped out at the end of every battle, and yes. it's only those new ones that have fallen. Nobody's fielding Death Company armies. The Death Company are not something you bring it along all the time. It's just if some of the Marines happen to fall on the eve of battle, the chaplains will paint their armor black, and they will be the Death Company. This is Fluffwise, of course. Um, this is the yeah. Death yeah. Company are one of the more powerful units that are iconic to Blood Angels that you will see oh, on the tabletop these days. Sanguinary Guard, less so. Bile Predators are a special Blood Angel variant of tanks like that uh, do you, you're seeing more and more of uh, on yeah. the tabletop these days. Mm -hmm. well, Blood Angels also have their own special variants of Dreadnoughts yeah. as well, including a Librarian Dreadnought, which no other chapter has and is quite useful and powerful in games yeah, as well these days. Uh, you also get Death Company Dreadnoughts for uh, Blood Angels who've been turned into Dreadnoughts. What happens since when a Marine in a Dreadnought goes mad? Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's kind of what blood angels are on the tabletop really yeah absolutely yeah so i think i think if you play blood angels you're free to use whatever the hell units you want you shouldn't be feel like you're shoehorned into only going full melee i get that people really want to play full melee and it's a really enjoyable play style and it's a really high skill play style and that's probably why a lot of people play blood angels but unfortunately 10th edition is not the edition to be doing that right now no. um and and you are and if you are if you are trying to convince yourself that is the fluff way to play, it isn't. Um, it, it's categorically not because, like I say, we are codex compliant. Yeah. So don't let it's, people start guilty. Oh right? no, you're playing Blood Angels. You should be all chainsaws. No, that's flesh terrors, and everybody knows they're shit. In the first chapter of Darkness and the Blood. Dante and Mephiston go on to a space hulk of sorts, I believe. Yeah. And they're accompanied by intercessors and hellblasters. There's no yeah. mention of Death Company. There's no mention of Sangre Guard. Yeah. They're with the Primaris. Yeah, they're it's, just doing their thing. The, the bulk That's were it. tactical marines, and the bulk now are intercessors. They're not... Yes. They're, not they're not anything... To be um, fair, when I read that, I was a little bit sad it wasn't them, but I get it. I get it, you know? It's just trying to lean into that as they were designed, as they were originally written, as this kind of, we really want to be Codex compliant, but we also really like jetpacks. And sometimes some of our guys go mad and we also like these golden shiny boys. It's like Codex compliant plus is the way they've always yeah. been kind of written. And yeah. this comes from a very old 
kind of equivalent stratagem we had, which meant that we could deep strike land raiders in, um, in six edition. Fly. Blood Angel land raiders were able. The, the idea was that a Thunderhawk transporter was flying them in over the battlefield and drop them in, and you yeah. get to put a land raider in deep strike in the middle of the board. So the joke was, Blood Angels have flying land raiders. Your yeah. army sucks. And until tenth edition, we did have flying dreadnoughts because our our um, librarians. librarians can manifest blood wings like Mephisto does and fly about. Yeah. We get librarians in dreadnoughts. Therefore, dreadnoughts can grow blood wings and fly about. Indeed. Which is awesome, and I'm really sad that for some reason now our librarians and our dreadnoughts can no longer manifest massive wings. And go well, the reason is, is that GW have clearly decided to uh, neuter the psychic phase as much as they can and simplify things by removing yeah. all the choice that you used to have to customize your librarians. And, and we can't that's find just them. the way the game is now. Because yeah. they want it to be closer to you know psychic and want it to be closer to uh, sanguineous. What are you going to do? Grow cost and grow big wings. Yeah, and now they get to put wings on other things and throw them forwards instead. Which, which makes no sense. I've just got this picture of the librarian just like, and then like over the, like the other side of the battlefield, some guys just like wings sprouting out of them. Yeah. They're like, what the shit's going Pick on? Pick up whole units at a time and just boot them over to the other side of the field. Um, like right. wings are appearing on their feet and on well, their helmets and you know, little, little vestigial, like little tiny, the thing style body horror just growing out wings. So yeah, yeah, there we go. This is the final, uh, final. Josh, really irritating me with this picture. Why? What? Your. What's what's wrong with that? We well, need an apostrophe and an e. No, it doesn't. You are a no. That doesn't work. You are. That would be sucks. you are army sucks. You are army sucks. That would make even less right. sense. It's right, isn't it? It is right. Is it right? Yes, it is right, oh, but it looks right. wrong because I had the same thought. Because when I first looked at it, I thought this spelt you're wrong, and then I was like, no, actually, no, no they you're didn't. right. Yes, right. It's just a, I think it's because it looks like it's um, a mixture of little letters and capital letters. Yeah, I think, I think that's why it looks there. wrong. It looks like it's drawn in Microsoft Paint or something. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Whoever made this, it is cool. Time. It is seriously cool. Thank you so much, yeah. Trevor. Blessed us with this piece of artwork. This is it's so old. It's been around for years, hasn't it? Yeah, it's like. Uh, so that would be yeah, about six, seven years, maybe eight. It's more, right. I don't know, more than that, if anything. It, it definitely dates back to the end of sixth edition. So yeah. we're currently on tenth. So yeah, there or thereabouts. Right. What's next? Have we got anything else? Uh, I want you to address the question on the thing. Why do we like Blood Angels? Why do you like Blood Angels right now, today, these days? I like them that you don't paint them all one colour. I think that's a big help for me because I get very demotivated when I have to paint an entire army the same colour. What, like so, red? Well, yeah, but when I get bored of red, I just suddenly decide, like, hey, I'm going to paint um, a black dreadnought because it can be a Death Company dreadnought. Even if it's got no rules for it, I'll paint it black because it's a change, right? And I, I did... Um, I did all my blade guard veterans in gold. I think I just I think I said this before, I did like twenty intercessors yeah. in red and I just didn't want to paint ten more models in red. So I painted them in gold. For me it made sense. Blade Guard, if you read the new lore, they are first company. First company yeah, for Blade Angels just... are technically usually Sangre Guard in gold. So I thought I'll have my Blade Guard in gold and I don't think many people have done gold blade guard, but I really like it. So I that's one I, I would absolutely do them with gold helmets. I would not do the entire model in gold, personally. But that's just me. I, I wouldn't because I've got a custodes army and I've painted enough gold. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Well, um, I just I'm unique. Yeah. Mark. That Mark, is, tell us why you you, you love blood angles so much. I I like the flavour. I love the idea of them being uh cursed and yet fighting on regardless. I like the nobility, I like the idea of the self sacrifice for the good of uh the people that they are charged with fighting for in duty. Um that all speaks to me. So uh, that's kind of why I stick with them. For me, it's very similar, actually. It's the, it's that kind of cursed nobility. Because you've got things like the Salamanders, who are just good guys, basically, mm. as much as, okay, apart yeah. from held our children and playing for us. But, um, Superman is all powerful and boring. Are... Batman is interesting because he's got exactly. the sort of like the cursed painful the, background that he they're not overcoming anything. Whereas the Blood Angels are genuine. Yeah, you, you read the story of Dante and things; it's phenomenal when he falls to the to the red thirst and accidentally, you know, kills uh, civilians and things like that. And it's it eating him up inside. They're all fighting to try and hold back that bloodlust, 
because they want to be better, because they want to emulate their father, as it were. They want to emulate Sanguinius. He brought in all these measures to try and help them control and push down their urge to fall. And then when they were tested, the whole corn Cygnus Prime, the World Eaters fell, the Blood Angels didn't. Yep. Because they had that, they experienced it. The famous, and I think this is fantastic, as much as I take the piss, I think um, Gabriel Seth is a phenomenally written character some of the time. And his whole problem with the Primaris <laughs> was that they didn't have that flaw. They, it turns out they do now, but they, he didn't think they had that flaw. And he felt that without being able to overcome that and to suppress that and to control that, to try and emulate their father, they wouldn't have been flesh terrors and they wouldn't have been blood angels because it's the it's the strive to be better, yeah. to not be a monster, is what makes them so interesting rather than just being perfect or space arseholes. Yeah, nobody's perfect. None of us are. And yet... Hopefully, we all keep yeah. on going regardless. John, so yeah, you, look, you look pensive. I was going to say, it's very interesting that you guys have these deep and rich, meaningful analogies. And I'm like, I you like infernal like pistols. I like charging with chainswords. And I like painting black and gold, apparently. I'm a very narrative, story-driven person. Yeah, I do enjoy good, rousing tales, legendary things, yeah. all this sort of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've always wanted to make a... Me. A, a modern um, chaos army because I don't have one. Mm-hmm. I've collected or have you know I I have armies for most of the armies in forty k at the moment. Um, or if I haven't got one, I've had one in the past, but I've almost never had any chaos ones. I had a world eaters army for a bit in third, but the reason that I don't have any chaos armies is that none of them have got the level of interest apart from thousands of the alpha legion. Dead. Okay, that I can relate to in any way. You know, Perturabo was just an arsehole. Yeah, um, Angron was a moron. Um, uh, who else? We got Horus was an idiot. Um, Mortarian. Mortarian is a massive hypocrite and a bit of a dick even before he fell. Fulgrim. Fulgrim, self-absorbed wanker. Um, <laughs> cool. And you go through, and none of them have got the depth of interest. Conrad, really... the Night Haunter. The Night Haunter was just, I want to be edgy Batman. Um, but, but I can't control myself and uh, I can't control active. myself because I'm edgy Batman yeah. and I can't, and I'm too sad that I can see the future that I'm, I'm not as good as Sanguinius, who could also see the future but wasn't a tosser about it. Um, <laughs> and that's the problem. It's a, it's a problem with a lot of genres and that, with badly written antagonists. Mm. Um, and that for me is so important that I can't get behind. Uh, an army without being able to enjoy its law. I similarly agree. That's why if I ever did a Chaos Marine army, it would be Alpha Legion. Alpha Legion can be quite fun because there's a whole ambiguity. Yeah. Um, and I quite fancy painting that colour shift kind of um, yeah. colour scheme. I think that'd be quite fun to try and work that yeah, one out. Fair. And I, I quite like the Thousand Suns. I've read the Thousand Suns Horus Heresy novel and Araman is one of the most well-written, rounded, interesting characters in the whole of 40k. Really? Absolutely. Phenomenal back to one day, okay. There was a book just called Araman, right? There is, is yeah, a book about him. Um, and even the more modern ones where it's just talking about how he becomes a space villain and Machiavellian and things like that. There's always a logical train to why he did it. Yeah. And it was never, certainly in the beginning, um, self-aggrandizing or for himself. He was always doing it to help other people. But it's that whole kind of lesser of two evils thing Mm. and it's constantly lesser of two evils lesser of two evils until it goes down a darker and darker path fair enough and it's just okay all all of the characters have got some bad law and some good law but hit me up later and um, tell me which of those araman books i need i need to look at and that should be interesting i might i might dig those Um, well if you want a recommendation seriously thousand sons which was one of the horus heresy novels just called thousand sons just called a thousand sons Okay. I think it might be my favourite Horus Heresy novel, if not the, it's certainly one of. Okay. Okay. Because um, it's about that fall of the, the Legion. And it's mostly told from Araman's perspective. 
So hopefully some of you who've been watching this have maybe learned a thing or two about Blood Angels. Um, if you haven't, then hopefully you've gained at least a modicum of amusement from hearing us rabbit on for as long as we have been. Um, hopefully you've heard all three of our voices and not just two of us if somebody's bugged up the audio. Well, like anybody else around here. Um, and yeah, if you like what we do, consider joining us and subscribing to the YouTube channel. It really does help out and support Absolutely. what we do, help us make more random shit like we do, uh, or on Patreon, should you wish it. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if we don't get subscriptions and memberships, we'll have to listen to your squeaky chair for another week. So that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it squeaking loads through I was just like the first two minutes. Okay. But all right. Still, I, can, I, can, I can just I can make some weird motions when make it. Um, and I really want old ones. <laughs> I can't afford it because I've got a child. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can we can stretch our kind of WD forty for you. I mean, we could do that. <laughs> Maybe just pour some null oil over it or something. It's got oil. Yeah. Over it. yeah that might that, that might lubricate it up. Yeah. <sighs> Always need more lube. Yep. <laughs> right and on that note thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one indeed how are you guys ta-ta